Blessed are the name of the living God. Hallelujah. See, the word of God is so simple that sometimes we want to complicate it. Yes, sir. Whereas he has made it so simple for all of us. When, when Brother Chris began to talk about Azusa Street, that was exactly what I had in mind over there. And he broke into the chair. That's why I screamed over there. Because I, I, it just came to my mind, you know, when the prophet is talking about when the Pentecostal movement really began, you know, when the anointing came down in 1906, I believe, in Azusa Street. You know, a black man, Joseph Seymour, he was a nobody, the son of a slave. With one eyed man, you know, mm. he was invited to come to California, you know, and, and, and preach, brother. Mm. So he came there, he preached only for one night. He was preaching on Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Oh, that the Holy Ghost will come down when you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. And the people there say, We don't know where this doctrine is coming from. Why? So he came back the next morning, brother, the door was locked. Mm. There was a chain there with his name, Don't come back. Mm. He has no place to sleep. Mm. He became a homeless man. And one of the sisters that used to go to that place said, you know, let's be kind to this man. No. So they let him spend the night. No. That's all you have to do. Amen. You've got a chance. One night stand. Amen. Let him spend the night. Yes. And they hold a prayer vigil. Yes. And he pray 24 hours. And they could ask themselves, what manner of man is this? They can pray all night. Mm. And they love what they see. So they kept him. And they begin to hold prayer night, you know, in their little house in Azusa. And it was there that the Holy Ghost came down. Oh, it was there that the fire department is coming because people are calling 911. Say we saw fire coming from the building. It was not in a cathedral somewhere. It was in a place where people were determined to worship their God in freedom with nothing tying them down. And the Holy Ghost came down to confirm. That's exactly what he wants, hallelujah. Yes. He didn't go to big cathedrals. He didn't go to talk to bishop of Archdeacon, whatever. He went to one eye black man there. And the kind of miracle that happened there, if you notice some of them, you will run. Where somebody with no hand will come there and pray a hand. Where music is playing with no instrument. Tell me who's playing it. Where is that God that did that there? Hallelujah. That's what I'm asking message believers today. Yes. I don't want to see a big preacher. I want to see somebody who believes that Jesus Christ is here today. Amen. I don't want to see a bunch of doctrines. I don't, Amen. I don't care. Amen. It doesn't impress me. Amen. That's not what I'm living for. I'm living to manifest Jesus today. Amen. Hallelujah. The same thing William Graham did. I want to do it. Amen. I want to do exactly what he did. Amen. Amen. If you don't want to do it, that's your business. That's right. You can go with his testimony. I want my testimony. Amen. I want somebody to equip my faith, but at least where I can begin to run on water. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. It's not God of history. That's right. The scripture never said this has a follow the prophet. Amen. He said this has a follow them. Amen. Them Amen. that believe. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. The problem we have today is that people are worshiping the prophet. Yeah. People forget the person that gave the message. Mm. Yeah. And they're worshiping the messenger. You gotta go back to the root. Hallelujah. Glory. That's why we are renegades. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. We are a bunch of renegades for the Lord. Mm. You can call us anything you want. But we know what we're looking for, brother. Yeah. Hallelujah. And when you find it, you stay there. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because Jesus will come and vindicate his words. Yeah. That he is there. Yeah. That he is the one. Yeah. Not a man. Yeah. Not an organization. Yeah. Not some building over there. Yeah. I don't care about that, brother. Yeah. I don't have to put my name anywhere. I don't even exist for goodness sake. I just want to serve him. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's manifesting himself. Hallelujah. Who with that what God is doing? But the prophet said, who with that what God is doing? Let me see this person. You just came and testified, brother, remember? Remember you couldn't even travel to South Africa, brother? That's right, brother. Brother Joshua were here. It's three of us, right? Mm. Having dinner somewhere. And this brother said, you know what? I want to travel. I've never really been able to travel for many years. Mm. Didn't you say that, brother? Amen. I was not drunk when I said to you, go travel. Amen. I was not drunk, brother. Amen. I meant what I said, and God did it. Amen. Hallelujah. The next day, he got his traveling document. My God. And he said to me, brother Paul, my mom is about to die. I said, your mom will not die. Amen. I was not drunk. Amen. I said, your mom will not die. You're going to go to South Africa. Amen. 
Amen. You go to see some society. Brother, it's not a theory. See, God wants each of us to have our testimony. Amen. Amen. That's what the message is. Yes, sir. Message is not a bunch of theory somewhere. Yes. Or doctrine. Yes. It's about manifesting Jesus today. Amen. Because if I manifest him, then when he comes, he will call me. Amen. If I can't manifest him, he's not going to call me. Yes, sir. Jesus faced the same thing when he was here. He met a Samaritan woman, and there was some discussion going on. Samaritan woman said, You know what? Oh, I thought we were. We, we, you, you Jews, you can go to Jerusalem. Let's go to the mountain. That's what we Samaritan do. The answer was very simple. Jesus said, There's coming a day yes. when they are washing the Lord. Yes. It's in spirit and in truth. Oh, Amen. Where is that doctrine today? Amen. Not in dogma. Oh. Not in fear. Amen. But in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's what God is looking for. Yes. And once you're grounded on that, yes. brother, you begin to see things that will shake your head. Oh, I don't want to share this, but excuse me for sharing it. I have precious people here with me. That sister there is so precious. That brother there is so precious. They are more precious to me than gold. Mm. We are connected not just in flesh, but I believe these two people, we are connected before I came to this world. And that brother there knows that too. The way he and I got to know one another is a miracle. Mm. The way our life unfolded is a miracle. Mm. And that miracle continues. And sometimes I don't know what to say. Mm. I went to see my dentist now. She's not my dentist. I was planning to go see her. I told my children what happened. I didn't want to share with anybody, but I went. Sister Grace is her mother. She's passed away. I saw Sister Grace again. Saturday morning in my room around 6 a.m. It seems so real like I'm talking to you. I was sitting on the table preparing the message I'm going to preach. And I look, and there's a fountain next to me. And a lady knocked at the door, opened the door herself. I look, I walk in, I look, it's Sister Grace. I say, God bless you, Sister Grace. She took her cup, she took the water, she drank, she talked, she disappeared. Mm. I screamed, bless her in the name of the living God. I said, oh, I'm sleeping. I'm crazy? No, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. Mm. There's something. Like I was saying before you guys came here, this is my daughter correctly, I saw an angel in my room too. It's on YouTube. The date and everything. She's not drunk. She saw a big angel standing in that room. The head was more than the roof. She was screaming. Are we playing game here? No, sir. You might call me anything you want, but I'll tell you something. I want to do exactly what with the bread and did. That's my hunger. I don't know about you. So I am not interested in being, I don't care. Show me a man who has the same hunger. Then we have something to do in common. That's right. If we don't, I'll shake your hand, I will move on. I love I'll keep pursuing what I'm pursuing. I want to live this life to have testimony that Jesus Christ was here with me, brother. Amen. Do you understand it? I don't want stories. Amen. I don't want theory. Mm. We want to pray. We say, Papa, what's the message for today? I'm just getting excited. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah, excuse yeah. me for doing that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because I do get excited sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Because I know that the stimulation sometimes is lacking even in the message that we receive. Even as Christians. Sometimes you're so, you know, Brother Chris and I were talking, the other day was telling me about the Pentecostal experience he had before the message. And something dawned on me, he said, you know what? Even when I was in Anglican Church, I enjoyed the Pentecostal people. Because there are some kind of freedom they have. That's right. You see, when they are singing, they don't care. Yes. But when I go to my Anglican church, everything is so formal. Right. They will write a number of songs on the wall, right. and everybody will stand like a statue to sing it. But when I look at the Pentecostal folks, they're just jumping. Yes. So I kind of enjoy that. But at that time, I was not ready for the sanctifier that they are living. You get that? I was not ready for that sanctified life. Right. But something there was attracting me. Amen. So when you are ready for all, justification, sanctification, Holy Ghost come down, you're done. Amen. You're sealed. Glory. Now you can just move on. Amen. We don't care about noise anymore. Amen. So both Pentecostal experience, the message of the hour is all together in you. Amen. Because it's the fullness of the message. Amen. 
We're not taking part in, in hope. Amen. Because the fullness of God is here. And we are the one to manifest it today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But in understanding, in stimulation, in everything. Yes. In Revelation, like they're touching the book of Revelation. Yes, sir. And I know that my precious brother, brother Sylvain and brother Sean, you're so excited about the book of Revelation. I know that. Amen. Because the book of Revelation, this is this is what makes difference Amen. between many churches you see today. Amen. That revelation. Who is in that revelation? What is in that revelation? Amen. That causes a lot of confusion. Right. But when you get the truth now, it will stimulate you even more. Amen. 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 You have testimonies already. My sister, we're not looking for testimonies. You got testimonies. But we want to go further. We don't want to go back. Amen. We don't want nothing to pull us backwards. Amen. We are not interested in politics Amen. or argument. Amen. We don't care. Amen. We just want to keep marching on. Amen. Keep your eyes Amen. on the prize Amen. so you can make it. Amen. Apostle Paul said you have to run this race with mastery. Yes. Like someone who wants to win. Amen. You understand now? Amen. When you're ready to the Olympics, that's a strategy. Amen. You know, don't run like a dog. A dog was running a race with, with, a, with a turtle. You know the story? The dog will put bones in every corner. So as the dog will come to every corner, it will stop in the bone. And the dog is going. You see now? The dog running like a turtle. You know, running like someone who is determined that nothing will stop you until you get to your destination. Amen. If you keep your eyes on the destination, you will get there. Amen. Amen. And if you listen to people, Hallelujah. that person don't like you. That person say this, uh, that pastor say this, uh, that brother say, you're done. Sure, By the time you finish dealing with all of them, you might as well forget your spirit. Right. Because you can't even sing. That's right. You don't even want to sing, brother, brother guess now. You don't want to sing. Mm. Or if you want to pay attention to the cares of this world, or trials of this world, don't we have trials? Yes, Any one of us, for us, we have got trials. Amen, brother. Some of us more than we can begin for. Yes. But it just keeps coming, one after the other, one after the other. But guess what? The God that made you, equipped you yes. for whatever trial. That yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Sometimes you may think it's too much for me. Say, no, my grace is sufficient for hey. you. Amen. Amen. Before I go for that, I'll ask Brother Christ to come and greet us, say a few words for us. We are tape, so everything we tape here goes to YouTube. We bless the name of the living God, Brother Chris. Come and greet us. Whatever you have, share with us before I continue. I wanted to do that, but I get excited, you know. Come on. <laughs> God bless you, saints. Amen. My name is Brother Chris, as he said. And this is my precious brother. Amen. Uh, I don't want to say much and hold up the words, but it's wonderful to be in, in the midst of the people of God. Amen. Whatever this gospel is, there I am. Amen. Whatever the truth is preached, that's where I am. And that's what I stand for. As my brother said, this is not about church. Don't do that. Amen. And of course, I've enjoyed that experience that it is time to move on. Amen. Yes. It should be yesterday, and I was telling him what's in my heart and what I'm looking up to. That it's time to move on. Amen. That's all I can say. It's the yes, time to move yes, yes. And anyone who is they have the hunger of God in his heart will perceive that it is time to move on. Amen. Amen. What I'm saying is very, very deep. Amen. But I know exactly what I'm saying. Amen. It's time to move on. Amen. We have enjoyed that. Amen. We have done that. Yes. We have experienced that. Mm -hmm. But God has more. Amen. God has more for me. God has more for you. Yes. In truth, in revelation, Amen. and in power. Amen. Amen. God has more. Amen. Beyond where we are coming from, mm -hmm. exactly. whatever we have done, and whatever testimony we have, whatever Ebenezer we have, whatever stone we have laid, there is more in the front. Amen. Amen. And it's based on the fact that God is not buried in Jefferson Day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely but not. It's not buried there. Far from that's what I believe. Amen. And that's what I stand for. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter where I wake up in the morning, I go to church and I sing it too. Amen. I will always seek the fellowship of the brethren. Amen. Amen. That apart from that, every man answers to his God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. God bless you, my precious. So let's, uh, let's be on our feet. Praise the Lord Jesus. To pray and we will speak upon the word. Precious Lord, we thank you for this moment. Yes. 
There's nothing we can say about but to appreciate what you have done. Thank you, Jesus. You have laid a cornerstone, yes. the foundation. Yes. All is ready. Say, come and act. Yes. Master call it. Yes. Lord. Most precious Lord, with my feeble self, with my ape, my infant person, yes. what is good about me? Absolutely nothing. Yes. Lord. But because of your grace, yes. Lord. Your mercy, I can stand. Hallelujah. I stand here, Lord, not because I am worthy, but just for your name's sake. Yes. Lord. That I may say a few words. Yes. Lord. That perhaps might strengthen somebody. To increase their faith because faith comes from hearing the word yes. therefore the true word must be preached so that the true faith as you have told us to contend for that faith that was once delivered to our fathers of faith lord jesus that faith was upon us when the message of the hour was preached when the messenger was sent because there were people who need to hear the message and so the messenger has to come to give the message to the people for whom it is supposed to be given. But the messenger never say, I am the message. For the messenger is not the message. Amen. The message has a source. It has a root. Yes. The message has the originator. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. Hallelujah. My Lord, my God. Take me away, Lord. Yes, Lord. But speak, my Lord. Just few words will be good enough for us. Yes, Lord. We pray with thanksgiving. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's come to the book of Revelation as we started last Sunday. Just to lay emphasis and basics. Um, we're going to be doing the Patmos experience today. That will be Revelation chapter 1 from verse 9. Revelation chapter 1 verse 9. I'm going to read maybe that verse 9 and you can see that opportunity. I, John, who also am your brother, am a companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and the patience of Jesus Christ. I was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. The reading of his word. Amen. Amen. May I have your sins. So, we're going to, like I said, you do this like a teaching, but sometimes I'm more of a preacher because I get excited and I lose all the notes. But we want to teach it so that we can make notes for those who are hearing this maybe for the first time. Um, if you've had it before, I pray it's still a blessing unto you. Um, we are talking about the revelation of Jesus Christ that John was nothing but a scribe. Right. It's not the revelation of John, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ for which John, who was a scribe, is not the author. The author is Jesus Christ, but John is the scribe, a writer. Right. Just like if you want to write a book, maybe I don't know how to type fast, whatever, I can find somebody who's a scribe. And then I can tell the person what I want to see in my book. Amen. And you have to write what I told you. You are not the author of the book. So John is not the author of the book. Amen. That's why we can gladly say that William Branham is not the author of the message. Wonderful. See now, William Branham delivered a message that was given to him. He's not the author of the message. Amen. He could not be the author of the message. Amen. Because we have a God as a jealous God. And if you substitute that God for any other God, be on your own. Amen. Because Apostle Paul says, said, this gospel, if any angel come down and preach anything contrary, cast you upon that angel. Amen. And we don't play with that. We don't play with our life. Amen. We know better not to do that. But it behooves any man to stand for the truth. Amen. So we believe, according to how William Bremen also explained it, that John is nothing but his wife. But as we learn foundation last Sunday, we continue to move further. Here, on verse 9, John is telling you and I who actually he is. He said, I'm your brother. Now, pay attention to the salutation of John. The reverend, give him the message. Whatever you want to call yourself. But John said, I'm just your brother. 
Right. And when Abraham said, I'm your brother, Amen. that means something. It comes in the sense of humility. Amen. So John is declared as a brother, but then he tells us here, he's also a companion. A companion of something very important. A companion of in tribulation. And the prophet told us, this tribulation we are talking about, it's not a white to a judgment. Amen? Because the tribulation that will come before the white throne judgment, the prophet said it's for the Jews. Amen. But don't forget also the foolish virgins are coming through, not the wise virgin. Amen? Amen. Because the foolish virgin will pay with their blood. Amen? Amen? Amen. But the wise virgin, you ought to be one of them. Amen. That's why those who don't believe in rapture, we don't argue. Amen. You just tell them, that's fine. But I know I'm going somewhere. Amen. Soon and very soon. Amen. It's after I'm gone, then there will be tribulation. Amen. Then after tribulation, they will come down to enjoy our millennium. Amen? But it's not for everyone because the people that will be in this tribulation, the prophet told us, will be the Jews for the most part. When Jesus will come to introduce himself to them, they will go through the tribulation and be fully treated as well. But the tribulation John is talking about here, we have to pay attention to that. Amen. John is saying here, I'm a companion in tribulation. And I try to make some notes on such tribulation so that we can get a little bit of it. The companion in tribulation, let us go to 2 Corinthians 4. Apostle Paul weighed in on that a little bit. And I want to pick it from there as well. 2 Corinthians 4. See, being a Christian is not a walk in the park. It's not a, a cake slicing. You slice the cake, you eat it, and all everything is good. It's a companion in tribulation. It means something. Let's let's pick it up a little bit. Let's put some weight into that. So, Second Corinthians, verse four, from uh, uh, chapter four, from verse eight. Second Corinthians, chapter four, from verse eight. It says, "We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed." but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our own body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, and that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our own mortal flesh. So then, Death walketh in us, but life in you. We moving, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written. I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised Jesus up, the Lord Jesus, shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, and the abundance of grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound in the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Here, Apostle Paul is laying emphasis on how perplexed we are, how troubled we are, but yet not forsaken. And that's what John is trying to say here. I'm your companion in tribulation. In other words, sometimes even Paul went further to say, you know, the things I don't want to do are the things that I do. And he began to say that I cannot bear this burden until God said to him, my faith is sufficient, my grace is sufficient for you. And he realized that even William Branham, at some point, he couldn't bear it no more. The tribulation was so much for him that he would try to kill himself. Amen? Amen. Not once, twice. Or probably more, but written to us. Could you imagine now if you read on the internet about Paul took a gun and wanted to kill himself? People will say, You see, he wasn't a Christian. You see, I told you the prophet himself took a gun and put on his head. It was the tribulation in question, it was the trial in question. Is this companionship that John is talking about? Because remember how John got to where he is. He said that I got there because of my testimony of Jesus Christ. And the prophet told us that John was called a witch. The people called him a witch. Why? 
Because can you take a human being and fry the human being for 24 hours? That's what they did to John. They fried him for 24 hours. He didn't die. So they say he's a witch against the frying oil. So let's put him in the island of Paris. And then we, we are sure he's going to die. But that was exactly where God wants him, right? As we talked last week. So sometimes, you know, devil will think he's getting a share of you, but you're going exactly where God wants you. God wanted him to be so separated from everything in this world that he would have no care. But just to say, Lord, you can take me home now. He can see the tiger, the python, opening their mouths. Well, I guess it's my day. Nothing. Two years he was there. AD 95 to AD 96. Two years he was there. For two good years he was in the island of Patmos. And he didn't die there either. Mm. It was after he spent two years to bring this book out for you and I that he went back to Ephesus. Where he died there as the pastor in the church of Ephesus. Amen? Amen. And the prophet is laying emphasis on this little thing so that you can begin to put your life into it. So it's not just the story of the book of Revelation. It's about why did God take such a person and took such a step? If God is doing the same thing, it's a pattern of God, how God works. So when God is dealing with you and I, it's the same pattern. Amen. It wouldn't change. Amen. So the things that come to you, you begin to argue here was needful for John so that you and I can understand the mind of God. Because remember, John was given threefold message. John was given what, what is past, what is happening, and what is to come. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? The whole school, everything. Hallelujah! Yes. And it was to be given to the bride. Because the bride cannot be confused. Amen. The bride of Jesus needs to know who they are. Amen. The husband cannot hide anything from the wife. Yes, How can the husband hide something from the wife? What kind of husband and wife are you? Well, some are doing it today, you know. But that's a different story. Amen. But a true husband, we don't have secret from the wife. Amen. Is that right? When you Amen. go to the bedroom, you can say, honey, let me tell you these things that I, you know, but it's a secret. So that's what John is doing here. Amen? Amen. So he's a companion in time of trouble, but he's still a companion. Now, there's another companionship he mentioned there, a companion in the kingdom. Two companionship. He said, a companion in tribulation and a companion in the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Let's see that. We're going to pick as much as we can pick as time will allow. See that. He said there, he says, he says, I'm a companion in tribulation and in the kingdom. Amen? So now, when you talk about, again, companion in kingdom, that, that's where you begin to really understand who you are. Because when you talk about kingdom, you couldn't have a kingdom without a king. Yes. And, and when you have a king, then you must have some people who are part of the kingdom. That's right. The inheritance. You must have those that are truly part of that kingdom. Amen. Amen? You must have some subject, somebody must be there for you to be a king. So John is saying here, he's just a companion. A companion means I am a core inheritance. Amen. I'm not just an outsider here. Amen? Amen. I belong here. I'm part of this. Amen? So, do you know how we're part of it? Because let's go to uh, Romans. Romans 8 17. Romans 8 17. Let's go there. We're going to pick here and there just to keep substituting our thoughts, to lay more emphasis on the things we really need to understand very well. Romans 8 17. So there, Apostle Paul is reminding you and I, in Romans 8, 17, he says, And if children, then we are heads, heads of God, join heads with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Amen. What a promise. Is there anything you and I are going through you can substitute for this? Glorify the Christ. Apostle Paul is saying emphasis on what John is saying. I'm a companion in the kingdom. In other words, I act 
nothing. Everything in the kingdom belongs to me. Amen. The king is actually my father. Wow. Amen? And as my father, everything he owns is mine. Wonderful. I just have to know who I am. Amen. I don't have to present myself. Amen? Amen? Like the story the prophet told us of that young black man in the days of slavery. William Graham gave a good analysis. Not that slavery is anything good, but this particular slave was doing something very unique. He said, this particular slave, although he's a slave, but he refused to behave like one. He refused to dress like one. He gets up every day, makes sure he's clean. Puts on the best clothes he can put on. And when the master said to do something, he does it with joy. You see now, he was presenting a different behavior. And the master said to him, why do you behave different from the rest of them? He said, because in Africa, my father was a king. And I was taken to slavery. So I'm still the son of a king. Amen. Although I'm a slave. Amen. But I'm still the son of a king. Amen. Although you say I'm a slave. Sure. It doesn't take away who I am. Yes. You understand that? Amen. You understand that? The circumstances you see like so does not determine who I am now. Amen. See now, the trials of this world now doesn't determine who I am Amen. or who you are now. Amen. It has not become what we will be because we're going to be just like him Amen. when we see him. Amen. Amen. Amen? The world may look at you differently. They may give you a title and then whatever. A holy roller, message believer, you don't want to cut your hair, you woman, you don't want to do this, you don't want to wear back, whatever, whatever I want to call you. You don't want to have some fun. You say, don't worry about it. I am something that you have not seen. Amen. I came from somewhere maybe you could never be. Amen. That's what that slave was saying to the master. Amen. I am the son of a king. Although you bought me with money, but I am still the son of a king. Hallelujah. And one day the master was selling all the slaves. Amen. And he refused to sell that particular slave. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And the person who came to buy a slave but a son, he asked him, why are you not selling this one? He said, no, I can't sell this one. This one is special. Amen. He says he's a king. He behaves like a king. Amen. I can't sell him. Amen. He's special. Amen. 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 We are special. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said, This kingdom you see like so, it's not mine. But one day he's coming to claim it because we are here. He couldn't leave us here perpetually. It's just in time. He said, A little while the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I'll be you. Because he that is in you, he's greater than he that is in this world. Amen. They cannot see him. Amen. How can they see who they don't know? They don't know him, they can't see him. So the things you say are foreign to them. Amen. Why do you talk so strange? That's Apostle Paul. That is, that is John here. John is telling you and I, I'm a companion in the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Are you a companion in the kingdom? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. And this kingdom we have can never be shaken. Amen. Every other kingdom we fell. Let's look at Hebrews 12, 28. This is a special kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. Hebrews 12, 28. Let's see how this kingdom is shaken up. A special kingdom for goodness sake. Hallelujah. What a kingdom that is. Hebrews 12, 28. It says this. It says, he says, wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Glory. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Amen? Amen. Every other kingdom is subject to move. History has told us there have been many kingdoms, brother. Egypt was there once, the greatest of all the world. Yeah. Roman Empire was there. Chinese were there. Yeah. Indians were there. Eastern civilization was there. United States today. It could be United Russia someday again. Who knows? But all these kingdoms, they have beginning, they have an end. Yeah. But we obtain a kingdom that is eternal, that can never end. Wouldn't you want to be a citizen of that kingdom Amen. and remain in that kingdom forever? Amen. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen. Not death, Amen. not prayer, not trial, not tribulation. 
Nothing can ever separate us. This kingdom is a tower. It can never be moved. Amen. It can never be shaken. Hallelujah. Once you get in, the Ephesians 4 10 tells you, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, for which now you're sealed until the day of your redemption. So once you get into that kingdom, be sealed. Amen? Amen. Seal out every noise. Seal out every unbelief. Amen. Seal out every doubt. Amen. Because you know, the devil is a big preacher. He will come to you and say, Do you think this is all true? How do they know? Tell the devil, you get late. Because you are about to enter the kingdom that can never be shaken. Yeah. That kingdom is a kingdom of truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Yeah. It's a kingdom of truth. It's not a kingdom of doubt. Yeah. If you ever doubt, you're not part of it. Yeah. You cannot have any single doubt in your mind. Yeah. You have to be sure. Yes, sir. Like when I ask the church one day, can you tell me why that we haven't had rapture yet? Why? If somebody said to you, rapture has happened, what are you going to tell me? You're going to doubt it? You know my answer? I answered that question. And when I was listening to the message, I just heard the prophet say the same thing. I answered that question without even hearing him say it. That's why if this message is in you, oh my brother, I answered that question in Florida. I went to Brooklyn and I asked the same question. Many people were confused. I don't know what to say. It's a simple answer. Why can you tell me rapture hasn't happened? Because I'm here. That's right. That's right. Simple. Amen. You're here. That's it. Rapture cannot happen without you. Amen. That's, right. That's it. You have to be sure. Yes, sir. Amen. There's no more argument. Amen. No theory. I'm here. Right. Rapture cannot happen without me. Amen. If it happens, I will know. Yeah. So if you tell me it happened, I say no, 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 because I'm here. Amen. I am sure I'm going to be part of it. Because Amen. he promised me. Amen. He that promised me told me to be sure. Amen. You can't doubt. If you begin to doubt, then you're not part of it. Amen. You must be sure. How are you sure? You're sure because you're sure. Amen. When I'm listening to the same message the prophet preached, the same message we're talking about, the Patmos experience, he said, somebody asked him, Brother Abraham, why are you sure the rapture happened? He said, because I'm still here. I said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 But I've been answering the answer, <laughs> you know, a year ago. It has to be true. You see, the word of God is so simple. I'm telling you, it's actually simpler than you think. That's right. It's not complicated. Amen. You know, some of us live a little complicated life, you know, life of science, and it's not that. Amen. This is so simple. Wonderful. That this little Gideon can pick it up and run with it. That's right. But Abraham was what a seventh grade or education or fourth grade or something? Yes, sir. You know, he wasn't like, he didn't go to college. He didn't go to high school. Mm. But God gave him the word. Amen. And it's not the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's not a theory. It's the word of God made manifest. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, Lord. we know why John was a Patmos because that's a. Uh, we know John was a Patmos because John told us where he is, and we've already said why he ended up in Patmos. So we're not going to go through that. Uh, but the next thing there is that he identified something which we sang a song. He was in the spirit. Amen. Yes. He said, "Ah." Was in spirit. That's past ten now. I was in spirit in the last day. We're going to keep it. We're going to combine it because of time. Can't pick everything piece by piece. But I, I, will, I will tell anyone if you have not listened to the Patmos experience knowledge from the prophet, take your time and just listen to the whole message. When we pray this message, it's like giving you a little appetizer, you know, to where to appetite so you can now go and sit down and, and listen to it. Amen. Because we can't preach this message more than two hours. We can we, we shouldn't be preaching more than 40 minutes. That's what the prophet said. You know? We shouldn't be preaching more than 40 minutes, you know? So when I stand here, it's to whet your appetite and you can, you know, run with it. But here, in verse, in, in verse 10, John was in spirit on the last day. Now, the prophet laid so much emphasis on that verse. And he began to say that to be in spirit. He said, for you to do anything for God, the prophet said, you must be in spirit. That's right. Not in human spirit, but in God's spirit. Right. You see, for God to use you for any purpose, you must be in spirit. Right. Apostle Paul said, if I have to sing, I sing in spirit. Right. If I have to dance, I dance in spirit. Everything pray in spirit. Right. You must be in spirit. Right. So John must first get in spirit in order to be in the last day. Amen. If John was not in spirit, he will not get in the Lord's day. Now, the Lord's day is a compound meaning that can probably take five messages to break down, but we come to a little summary of it. Now, the Lord's day.
day, it's not the day of man. That's for sure. So you can note that. The Lord's day is not the day of man. Today is the day of man. We are living today in the day of man. Today is not the day of the Lord. That's point number one. Point number two, you got to understand when there are so many confusion about what day is happening. Saturday, Sunday, they are not the Lord's day. We don't talk about what is the Lord's day. Then let's find out why is Saturday not the Lord's day. Because many people think when God told the people of Israel, He gave them a memorial of Sabbath. But Sabbath means rest. Amen. So God created everything He did in six days, and the seventh day He rested. Amen. What does that mean? When you get into the rest, they don't work no more. So God is done creating everything He needs to create. He rested. Right. So it was a memorial that He gave the Jews mm. to observe the Sabbath. Because the true Sabbath was coming. Amen. That true Sabbath, Apostle Paul wrote also in Hebrews chapter 4. Let's touch a little bit of it. For those who want to pay good attention and make no time. You know, let's, let's go there. Let's go to Hebrews 4. We're not going to read the whole thing, but let's speak a little bit. Hebrews chapter 4. Actually, it's 1 to 12. Let's see if we can go fast on it. Because, you know, I came from a family that married into seven day Adventists, which you know, my wife was a seven day Adventist. And my, my in laws, they are all still seven day Adventists. How long? They've been here, we have service here. One got baptized, I still went back to seven day Adventists, you know. So, what can you do? But um, everything is with love. Amen? We, we don't have a machete. Amen. We don't use machete to preach the word, we just preach. <laughs> it's a seed. You know, the seed is sown, and may the Lord have his way. Amen. So, Hebrews 4, um, I said 1 to 8. Yeah, 4, 1 to 8. So, Apostle Paul is writing here. He said, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise be left us of entering into his rest, that any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my right, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day of this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his work, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remained that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached, enter not because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, today, after so long a time, as he said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterwards have spoken of another day? There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. Amen? And you can read off on and on and on. Here, Apostle Paul is solidifying by revelation. He obtained the revelation of what rest is. This is not somebody's thought. Because the prophet also laid emphasis on the fact that the word of God must come to us through revelation. In other words, if it's not revealed to you, you will still be confused. Amen. Apostle Paul is saying here, God entered him into his rest and he walked no more. And Jesus was promising that there will come a day of rest. It's not that day that was promised in the desert. When Jesus now come, Jesus now declared, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heaven that is, and I will give you rest. Amen. Confirming what Paul is saying. Amen. 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 So we're not confused. So the day of the Lord couldn't be that day. Amen. The rest day couldn't be that day either. Both of them. 
Amen. But the day of the Lord is not Sunday either. But the prophet told us, which we know to be true, the day of the Lord is the day of judgment. Amen. The day of the Lord is the day of judgment. When we read further to the same revelation, you will begin to see what John saw Jesus present himself to be. The day of the Lord is the day of judgment. Because on that day, even the trees will be running away. Nothing will stand. In Malachi chapter 4 verse 5, when we know that we obtain a message, that the messenger will come to us, it was declared then that Elijah will be sent before the dreadful day of the Lord. The dreadful day of the Lord is the day of the Lord. That is the day of judgment. The first coming of Jesus was not dreadful, for on that day they smit on his face, they slap him around, they whack him like he can whack anything else. But when he appeared now, what John saw, which you shall see now, let's read further. Let's go back to Revelation. We are picking some nuggets here and there, but like I said, you know, listen to the message, you get the rest. But uh, as the time will us, okay. We are on 10 now. We pick the day of the Lord, we pick the spirit. There was a trumpet, there's a voice, and then again, the message tells us that the great voice, the trumpet was announcing that somebody is coming. That's how the prophet put it. He said, the trumpet, when the trumpet blew, there was a voice that sounded like a trumpet, and that trumpet is a voice announcing somebody is coming. So when John was writing, the John said, there was an announcement that somebody is coming. And now the prophet began to declare to lay more emphasis on the deity of Jesus Christ. Because that announcement will tell you that Jesus Christ is not a second party, not a third party, but the party itself. Amen. The all and all. There's no more confusion about that. Now the believers have to know who he is. You cannot be confused anymore. Amen. If somebody comes to you and says there's Trinity or Trium, say, excuse me, excuse me. Say, have you read Revelation yet? Have you read where Jesus Christ read himself? You gotta get the whole book. You don't get half of the book. You don't start just quoting John or quoting Luke because he said, My father, he said, he's talking about his father here. You have to take the whole Bible. Amen. You see, one of the things John was told here, which we will not get to today, John was said, Take this book. Eat the book. The whole book. It shall be sweeter than honey in your mouth, but bitter in your stomach. The whole book. So what we are doing is to eat the whole book. Amen. Not half of the book. Not a page. Amen. Not a revelation there. But we are putting everything together to be called a bride of Christ. Amen. Amen. So there's an announcement somebody is coming. Who is he? He said now, I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I am the first. I am the last. What thou seest right in the book. And the way the prophet preached it, he skipped the messages that were being preached to the, to, to the church ages because each one of them would be a message by itself. So instead of going through them one by one, give me a tissue. Instead of going through, we're going to skip it as well. But what you got to get here is that there was an announcement that somebody is coming and that person coming is none other but Jesus Christ himself. And Jesus Christ said right there in plain view, after me there's nothing else. I am everything. Everything you ever read was me. When they talk about father, they're talking about me. Just like he told the Jews. Abraham was rejoicing to see my day. He rejoiced, he said to see my day. He rejoiced when he saw it. And they said, Look at you, you're barely 30 years old. He said, I'm the one David was writing about in the Psalms. They said, We don't know this guy is crazy. He said, No, I'm a God of the living, not the dead. I'm a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, Hold on. Are they dead? You see, it's a mystery what Jesus Christ is saying. But to the bride, it's not a mystery. Amen. It just reaffirms what you already know. So that's what Revelation is. Amen? Amen. Now, John said, I turned to see the voice that spoke to me. And being turned, he saw seven golden candlesticks. Now, the prophet in the message lays so much emphasis on this as well. But again, for sake of time, we're going to call out things here and there. And you can. Get all of you from the message. Here, the prophet said, the translation is what called this candlestick, but it was supposed to be a lampstand. 
He said the, the actual translation of this is not a candlestick, but a lamp standing. Amen? And then he went further in the book of Zechariah, chapter 4, to lay more emphasis on that. But it's, it will be easy for you to conceptualize what he's trying to say. Sometimes it might take five pages for you to get a point. But if you get it, you get it. It's simple. Amen? Now, prophet is saying, if this was a candlestick, it will burn off. If I take seven candlesticks and put here and light them, if you come a few seconds, the candle, candle is gone. Amen? But this is about church ages. He said, this is about what God is trying to do for the seven church ages. Amen? And then he then emphasizes that it's a lamp stand. In other words, it's a stand. When I brought this light here, I wasn't even thinking about this. But my son told me we need some light. So I brought this. After I brought it, I looked and said, hmm. It looked like the, 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 the lamp stand. Amen? So let's see. Prophet said it's a lamp stand. This is, we'll be to be seven, this is not this five. Right. Seven lamps, lamp stand to hold each. So this is a stand to hold the light. So if this is not candlestick, it's a lamp stand and you put the light and you light it. And the prophet said, once you light it, you just put oil, the same light here, we we'll light this and light this and light this and light this. You don't light each one. So that's how the message is given to the seven church ages. When the first church has come, after it dies off, the next comes, the next, you don't keep lighting it. It's just oil is what you have to keep pouring in there. And that oil is what? The Holy Ghost. Amen? The Holy Ghost. Because remember, the foolish virgin, the white virgin, the foolish virgin didn't have enough oil. They don't have the white, the Holy Ghost. Amen? So, the oil is the same anointing. As when the prophet was saying this, he broke into preaching more than he wanted. I mean, because the anointing is so much, the revelation, to let you know how that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same anointing that was for the first church age is the anointing that will go all through. The same spirit. You see now? So if you're telling me about Apostle Paul, you are here. You manifest what Apostle Paul did. There's, no, there's two Holy Ghost, it's not different, brother. It's the same Holy Ghost. It's the same Spirit. That's why Jesus Christ is the same today. Today. Not just yesterday. I don't want to just talk about him yesterday. I don't want to just talk about what he's going to do tomorrow. I'm talking today. Amen. We want to see him today. Amen. Sir, we want to see Jesus today. Amen. Amen. If it's a desire in your heart, you will surely see him. Amen. Today. Hallelujah. So that's what the prophet, I mean, this is a, it's a lot of explanation on that message, but um, how, what, what time do you have? I don't want to push to you. What time is it? 335. Huh? 335. 335. So I will say four, we're done. So we can eat some food. Because I'm hungry too. <laughs> yes, okay. uh, we fast uh, usually on Sundays. I, I don't drink water. So. At this time, I'm getting tired. But, amen? I'm glad you're here. Amen? amen. Let's say the name of the living God. I'm going to just get one or two quotes from, from the prophet on that. Um, there are so many things here that I don't know where I like to hit. But he talked about the seven spirits, um, where, you know, what John saw, but the, the color, the hair, the head, you know, you know, there's just so much nuggets. But uh, uh, let's, let's, let's run up. Let's run up. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, we talked about the candlestick, so you get that. So just understand it basically, that the candlestick is actually a lamp holder. And the lamp holder, what John saw, were seven of them. And each one is a church age. From Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pegamus, to Tartarus, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, to Laodicea, seven church ages. They were being held in this lamp, this lampstand. And there was one, like the Son of Man, in the middle of it. That son of man is Jesus Christ who have, who have introduced himself. So Jesus Christ is sending seven messengers to the seven church ages. Amen? Amen. Amen. For which you and I are part of it. Amen. So you have to know where am I? What am I supposed to be doing? Amen? Amen. That's why you have to know. You don't just run around and do whatever you want to do. You have to ask, did God say anything for this church age Amen. that I need to pay attention to? What is the characteristics of the church age I'm living in? Because if I know, then I will know if, if I'm part of it or if I'm not part of it. Right? Just 
like if you don't apply for a job, they have qualifications. They will tell you, you have to have this certification, that certification. Some of us, uh, this and this, you look at it, I don't qualify. You know, right? If you qualify, then you put your name. You say, yeah, I'm qualified. I have that certification. Amen? It's the same thing we're talking about here. That's why Jesus said on that day, many will come and say, I did all kinds of wonder. He said, walk away from me, walk away from me. I don't know you. Because the qualification I gave you for the church age, you need. You didn't meet it. You didn't meet the standard. You can't tell me you're going to do what your forefathers did. Because it's okay. No, it's not. My father was a preacher. He smoked cigarettes. He smoked tobacco. He drank beer. He was a great preacher. That was for his day. That's right. Not today. Mm -hmm. I ran into some preachers that say, you know, they like to bring some stout. It's good for their stomach. I said, okay, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, who, who will need that stomach? Something. But keep going. You know? So that's all kind of foolishness, you know. But you gotta know the church age you're living in. That's right. And what God calls for. Amen? Amen. So that was the first thing, one of the things John saw in those candlesticks, which the prophet told us actually is not candlestick, they are lampstand. And he cross reference that to tell us actually where that came from. But you can you can pick it up later. Um, if you want, you can read Zechariah chapter 4. That will tell you more about that. But Zechariah chapter 4 says the same thing that you have in the scripture. You can read that later. Amen. And then uh, let's come down to the final phase of this. What else did John see here from verse 14? John said now, his hair, his hair, and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow. All these things, the prophet laid emphasis on each one. His hair, his hair, white as snow. And then his eyes also as flame of fire. His feet, like a brass, fine brass. Again, emphasis was on brass. Um, brass, you can connect it all the way back to Moses making the golden, the, 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 the snake, the, the brazen snake. That all those who look at the brazen snake were not down. Which the prophet told us that that brass, that, that snake at that, at that cross means sin has already judged. Amen? Yeah. That, that snake at the cross means sin already judged. You understand it? Sin already charged. Amen. Amen? Amen? That's why blessed is the man who God doesn't imprint iniquity unto. Amen. Amen? See, Jesus on the cross represents sin already charged. That's why you are only glorified and justified and nothing can be made against you. Once you can get into that cross, Amen. once that blood speaks for you, Amen. speaks more excellent than the blood of heaven himself. So, brass, the prophet is talking about it, signifying almost sin that's already judged. Amen? But here, Jesus is appearing, as we are reading, on the feet as, as a brass, okay? And then, uh, keep reading some more stuff, and then his feet was like unto brass, uh, furnace, and his voice, sound of many waters. Again, he made emphasis on each one, sound of many waters, the church edges speaking, you know, different prophecies that are coming from the sun, the water meaning people, sound of many water speaking, amen? Each one signifies something, we get to that in the in the second I'll read, so close on that. And he had in his right hand again, the seven stars. So the seven stars now, we talk about the, 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 the golden, the, the, the stand, the lampstand. So the lampstand now have stars, seven stars. Those seven stars are the seven messengers that are going throughout those church ages. Amen? Amen? The seven stars, even though it's explained here, the Bible even explained that, so that, that part is not a mystery, because it tells them those stars, what they are. There are seven messengers to the seven church ages. But the mystery of the church ages is, who are those messengers then? So if there's any mystery there, that the prophecy, it is to explain who those messengers are. The Bible is clear to tell us we have seven messengers. So there's no argument. But he had to take the prophet of God for our day to come and tell us truly who those servants are. Otherwise, it's not argument. Which means I may say it's Mr. A, but I sure may say I think it's Z, which is the way it has always been. Until William Graham came and 
explain who those seven messengers are. And he raised the board, and God wrote it back on the board to take away the ambiguity that God truly sanctified, that God truly justified, that God truly said, I am there. I am the one that gave the message. It's no longer ambiguous. Amen. Otherwise, we will all be confused right. like anybody else. Amen? Amen? We get to those in subsequent services. Hallelujah. So now, and he had in his right hand those seven stars, and out of them, out of them went sharp two edges sword. And you know, the sharp two edges sword is the word of God. It's the piercing asunder, you know, the heart of man, which you know. So that's what it is right there. And the countenance, the prophet talked about it. The countenance was like the sun shining in strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. That's the way one should do. When the word of God is before the first, I am the last. I am he that liveth, and I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys to hell and to death. Write these things which you have seen. Write them down, John. Which are, and which are the things which shall also be hereafter. The three things, see? The three things, things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter, and the things which are seen. So, past, present, future. Write them. The mystery of the seven star, which we are talking about, which thou seest in my right hand, and the golden candlestick, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Those angels are human beings. They are people. He's a human. This is not angelic you know, angels. These are humans that are going to the seven church ages. Because they are on earth, they are here. And they were named. Those church ages they existed in Asia Minor. And the prophet told us. That those seven church ages existed. The seven churches is a type. The seven church age is a type of seven churches that existed in Asia Minor, and the characteristics of those churches is the same characteristics with the seven church ages. So each one is a type, but they do exist. They existed, amen. So when the Bible is talking about angel here, it's not talking about angel Gabriel or angel Michael. It's talking about a human being, amen, 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 amen. 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 So the seven, okay, and the seven kinds of similitas are the seven churches. Amen. So let's get one or two things from the prophets. Let's remind them. There's so many, I mean, this message is like more than two hours, so there's no way we can preach it in 20 minutes. But uh, just to lay emphasis on one or two meaningful things. Uh, I was in the spirit. Let me start from here. Okay. Well, the introduction says they put they put him on in the island of Patmos two years, and why God had him out there alone to himself, he wrote the book of Revelation as the angel of the Lord read to him. And then as soon as that was over, he came back to homeland and pastor in the church in Ephesus and died and buried in Ephesus. Amen. Now he said, I John, who I am also your brother, he read the same scripture, prophet is saying here. In other words, he took the word of God and was proving it. That 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 was the word of God, and Christ came back through him to testify that he was right. Amen. So it's one thing to speak the word, it's another thing for God to say, You're right. It's one thing to say, I'm called, it's another thing for God to say, I call you. It's one thing to say, I received something, it's another thing for God to say, Yes, I gave it to you. So God came back and said, Yes, I did. I testified to your calling, John. There you are, the prophet said. God's own word being made manifest in him, proving that he was God's servant, then they could not deny that. So they had to tell him that he was a witch. They bewitched the priest and he wouldn't hurt him. He, he was bewitched, they said, people, they wasn't healed. And he was a fortune teller, they said, some kind of a bad person, an ill spirit, a foul spirit. And that's the reason they put him out there. Though he was, they said he was dangerous to, to the society. But he was only carrying out the will of God, and God had a purpose on that all that condition. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, and he said, now he continued here when he said, and your brother prophet said, now he didn't speak to of the great tribulation. When he talking about comparing the tribulation, that was not the great tribulation. And I told you that already. So the great tribulation comes to the Jew, not to the church. Amen. No, 
know, this is a, a teaching, so the excitement is low. I like to get a man a lot of excitement, you know, very hospitable. This, you have to take your time to get something, certain things true. Now, John was translated, and I wanted to John was translated from the island of Patmos in the spirit over the lost day. That is the day of man. He said, This is the day of man. This is the day of man. Men are fighting today, but the day of the Lord will come. When this kingdom will all become a kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ, then that will be the great millennium. See, the last day, the day of His coming, His judgment, that is the day of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. The prophet said, this day, this is the day of man. That's the reason they slam around and they do whatever they want to do. Amen? They call you holy roller. They call you fanatic. Amen? But there will be a time that come that they won't do that anymore. They will scream, they will wail, they will fall at your feet. The Bible says so in Malachi chapter 4. Amen. Amen. Glory. In the spirit, in the spirit of the Lord's day again. Now we hear it now. What, what, what was he doing? He was translated from the island into the spirit over the Lord's day. And as soon as he got over to the Lord's day, as soon as he got over to the Lord's day, he had a trumpet. What was it? It is somebody approaching, a great one approaching. The trumpet sound. Somebody's coming. He looked. Prophet said, Hallelujah. He looked. Who was it? The greatest of all in Revelation is the deity, the supreme deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot get to the first base until you believe that. You know, you hear that? You can't move forward until you believe that. The deity of Jesus Christ. You can't go put him as Trinity. Forget your trion relationship. Forget your God, the Father God. Just say the name of Jesus Christ. Because that is the name above all name. That is the name that can heal cancer. Any disease for that matter. That is the name that we need for us to go to rapture. If you got to be part of this, you got to believe that. That's ABC of what we believe. Jesus Christ is God. Amen. There's no three gods. He's the same God in three different offices. Amen. That doesn't mean he's three. He doesn't have three personality. The prophet said if he's three God, he has three personality. A person who has to have a personality. It has only one personality we know. That personality is I am that I am. That personality was pillar of fire before. That personality appeared to Moses at the, at the burning bush. That personality appeared to Paul on the way to Damascus. The same personality. Paul said, who are you? Then he was Saul and said, I am Jesus. He cannot keep it in the bricks. He's the same personality. He cannot change. He just changes form. He can morph himself. He can fail himself. But he's the same God. If, if he is your father, no matter how he looks, you say, that's my daddy. Amen? Amen. If I move around, you say, that's my daddy over there. Even if she doesn't see my face, you say, that's my daddy. Because you know your daddy. Amen? Amen. They that know their God Amen. shall do greatest for them. Amen? Amen. 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 So we talk about the golden candlestick. What I want to lay emphasis is to find uh, the seven compound. Okay, uh, we talked about the different attributes, the hair, the, 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 the color, and just so you can pick something from it as well. Amen. Um, now, talked about, okay, well, there's many, many analysis the prophet used, but time again, we look at it. analysis of the father. We are talking about the, the things that John saw are the things that manifest themselves in the night. Amen? The, the candlestick. Amen? The stars. Amen? They too have a meaning. Everything you see here has a meaning. So the prophet said, the meaning why you, John was shown things that was happening in the night was because those things you see, the sun, the, 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 the star, right? They, they manifest the light of the sun. See? It is the sun's light that shines through to the stars. You get it? Now, the prophet is saying, if you be a true child of God, you will manifest the true sun. That's what John is seeing here. That those candlesticks, those stars, they will manifest through Jesus Christ, the same light. And the same light is supposed to transmit to you and I. And though it is evening time, but remember, there shall be light. Amen. 
There shall be light. It's like right at the evening time. There shall be light. Amen. And the light has come. And darkness cannot comprehend it. Amen. The light has come. We have received the light. Amen. So, see now. He said, stars. So the prophet is saying here. Stars. Candles. Lamp. What does it mean? What does that mean? That is the dispensation that we're living in. It's a night time. It's night time. If you look at the drawing of the seven churches again, you will see how the light dims from each church each to another. Amen? Amen. The prophet said it's a night time. That is the person we're living in. See? And what? What? He said, what does those stars do? It reflects the light of the sun. Like you say, until the sun returns. It's based on the name of the, of the Lord. And the true minister of God does not reflect some other flashlight, but they match the stem. They will match the same light of Christ to the church. He is the same. He is alive. He is which shine in me. Hallelujah. That is the light in the flesh. The star reflects the light of the sun. So we are reflecting the light of the Son of God. Amen? That's the meaning of that. Hallelujah. Aren't you happy to know that? That's the light we should reflect. Glory. Amen. Now, now we're going to read the sevenfold. The prophet said, uh, the sevenfold, so his head. Now watch the seven things he's going to mention. He said, hey, we read it, his head and his head, the eyes, the feet and everything. What a vision he said. What does those, what does those mean? The glorified son of God and the simple. Now, he said, um, hang on, hang on. Now, I'm trying to cut it down. Now, let's, okay. Uh, now, notice here, the first thing now we notice is his hair and his hair. They were white as, as wool. His hair and his hair were white like wool. Now, it does not mean that he was aged. That wasn't the reason of it. He wasn't aged. It was because of his experience, his qualification, his wisdom. Because he is eternal. He's eternal. He cannot age. Amen? You get that? So that's what the white as wool means. He was coming as a judge. The prophet went for that to explain. When we read further here, he started to talk about him being a judge. Because remember, he said, if you look at even the example he gave, he's looking at uh, England. And maybe in Trinidad, I don't know, in some countries, South Africa, I think he said. Even Nigeria. Judges, they wear wool, white. See? It's a sign of experience. It's not because they are old. When we see a judge in the court, they don't do it in the United States here. It's a country of who cares? They wear suits, they don't care. But in Africa, I believe in Europe, judges, they put off a white wool. So that's what Jesus had there as a judge, signifying he has come as a judge. That white wool is here on his head. And the God of he had, the prophet talked about the God. See, the God was not on the waist. He said, because if the God was on the way, he will come as a priest. But this coming is not as a priest, it's a judge. It's up his shoulder now. Up his shoulder. If the Bible calls his back, P -A -P, up his shoulder as a judge. Amen? So those are the significance of those. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we talked about this. So, um, he come to a set of days whose hair was white as wool, and the son of man standing. Hallelujah. Yeah, this message. Uh, what time is the brothers for us? After four, we got it. We got stop. So, in closing, let's just tie something together because we're going to continue this on Sunday. Next Sunday. In closing, understand something. The Patmos vision was to lay prelude. It's it's like the beginning of the journey of the church ages. That was. The significance, besides the interpretation of the meaning of every item you see there, as a Christian, what it means to you is that God is about to tell you and I the journey we have before us in the life of Christians before the rapture. The journey we have as Christians before the rapture. Because it is the prelude to Revelation 2 and 3 that lays emphasis on the seven church ages. 
And the prophet said, after Revelation chapter 3, the bride is gone. And never return again until Revelation chapter 19. Which is when the bride and the Jews will come down. The Jews are here, past the tribulation, but the bride is coming down. But the Jews that are saved will join us in millennia. Including the, the foolish virgins. Because remember, there are three groups that John saw. One group was from many nations that John asked, who are these? We get to those there, but we're just laying emphasis. And John was told again, they came from the great tribulation. They pay with their blood. We we we'll talked about it the other day. And there's another group, 144,000, they were so precise that the Bible gave us its number of the 12 tribe of Israel. You cannot be confused. Even still, some people are still confused. Some people still say those are Christians. When the Bible is telling you who they are, that one doesn't need any revelation. It tells you from each tribe of Israel. Amen? It's not me, it's not you. Amen? Now, the other group is the bride of Christ. And the bride of Christ, John was told to come up. Come up! And I will show you the bride. My wife. Amen? Aren't you happy you're the wife of Christ? Amen. What a privilege. So, this is a prelude to show us what God plans to do with the Gentile church age. And after the dispensation of the Gentile church age is over, he will deal with Israel. He cannot deal with me and you and Israel at the same time. He cannot. And I gave you a type of thing that the prophet told us too. Joseph, in Egypt, when his brothers came, he had to excuse his wife. And, his, and then introduce himself to his brothers. Not why they were there. Amen? It's the same thing with Jesus. We have to go somewhere. He has a place prepared for us. Amen? Amen. I am so ready to go. It's not even funny. Every day when I wake up, I say, is it today? I pinch myself as I'm still here. Amen? But something tells me that one glorious day we will be there. Amen? Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet. Something tells me that soon and very soon we will be there. Yes. When you look back and see that there are people you love so well, and so much, and some of them are no longer here. Don't you think that God has a better plan than you and I have? If God can do it that way, he knows what he's doing. The place is so short, and the place is so beautiful, and the prophet went beyond the curtain of time, and he came back and said, I, I, please don't miss this place. He said, even, even if you're my enemy, I want you to come. It's, it's so beautiful. Amen? What well, I guess? Amen. So the, the things we see here and the daily struggles and all these things, one day it will be over, one way or the other. Amen. We just have to keep pressing on. Amen? Amen. The message has been given to us. We thank God for the life of William Graham. We give honor where honor is due Amen. for such a, a man that was so humble to allow himself to be used in this magnitude. And we're not confused like the world. Amen? It's not because we, are, we, are, we have anything special. But it's because before the foundation of this world, you and I were predestinated Amen. to be sons and daughters of God. Amen. God thought about you and I. Amen. Even before he laid any foundation of this earth. Amen. That's what he told Job. Where were you? When the sons and daughters of God, Amen. they shouted for Job. Even before the foundation of this world. So we are not paralleled or paralleled or troubled without measure. We are grounded on because we have received the of the Lord. We just keep pressing on. When it seems like there's no more way, we press even harder. Amen. When it seems like the gates are being closed, we press even harder. Amen. Because he has set us. He knows we can make it. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you this afternoon. And I hope one thing or two was said that was a blessing to somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided.
of the living God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. My Lord, Hallelujah. my God, my Father, 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 blessed be the Holy Name. We have spoken your word yes. from the throne of mercy. Now, Lord, you said in your word, if my children that are called by my name, yes. we humble themselves, Ooh. we cry, we cry. You can hear their voice. Your ears are not shut that you cannot hear, nor your hand so tiny or shut that you cannot touch. Oh, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. You are the same fountain of life. You are the one that saw the seed in the church of Ephesus, Lord Jesus. And the light will shine no matter how dim it is. There will be a people Lord, who will make the light to keep on shining. There will be some sons and daughters of God who will reflect the sun this day. And they are here. And they are everywhere. And they are scattered all over the world. They may be in one church or the other. They may be in one church or the other. It doesn't matter the name. It doesn't matter the title. But you say it in your word. You say my sheep. They know my voice. And when they call, when you call, they will answer. And a stranger voice, they will not follow. My Lord, my God, we want to go home. We want to go home. And the bride said, even so, come quickly. Come quickly, my Lord. The scripture tells us, Lord, when the last bride has received the word, we will go home. One glorious day. Where is that bride? Where is that bride? Who is that bride? You know the bride. You told the seeker, prophesy, son of man, shall this tribe rise again. If the bride is a tribe somewhere, let the bride rise and we may go home. My Lord, my God, we are tired and weary. The things of this world, hallelujah. Oh, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, you said in your word, because of the cares of this world, that Moses turned his back because of the pleasures of Egypt to have a fresh home with his own people. You said that the people of God, their testimony, they live in sheep holes. They drank wine all over them. They were not even worthy. This world is not worthy of their own testament. The Lord Jesus, we are here. We are here, Lord Jesus. We are here. Pemplers in everywhere. Sickness in everywhere. Trials in everywhere. Troubles in everywhere. My Lord, my God. You say, call your name, Lord Jesus. When you do these things, Lord, you know we always come to thank you. We like to come to thank you, Lord. When you do these things, Lord, when there is no kidney walking, Lord, but still our sister is still alive. We came, we thank you, Lord. When there seems to be no way, Lord, when, when diseases are being healed, Lord, we come and thank you. Will you do more for us, Lord? There are people here, standing here this afternoon, they need you. And you know each and every one of them, you know their need, Lord. There is no time that's too late for you, Lord. Oh, would you do it, Lord? Hallelujah. Do it, Lord. Do what you said you will do, Lord. Oh, you'll be great. You'll be marvelous, Lord. Oh, the people will rejoice. Hallelujah. When you do mighty things, Lord. You're a mighty God. You're a mighty God. Who can be compared to you? With whom shall we even compare you, Lord? When you do mighty things, Lord, we give you mighty praises. Your children love to thank you, Lord. The pride of by your blood, they like to come and thank you. Can you look at every face that's here this afternoon, Lord? Do something new, oh Lord Jesus. But a son needs you, Lord. Even that pain on his body, Lord. And we, we, we cast that pain, we cast that pain in the name of Jesus Christ. We rebuke that pain because we have the authority. When my prophet was here, when he's done preaching. He will say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I hold every spirit under my control. And therefore we come under the same anointing, in the name of Jesus Christ, we hold every contrary spirit under our control. Hallelujah! And now, every blessing that's upon us, every blessing that's promised for us, every blessing that's our portion, we unleash. To every believer, to all those that will believe, believe it that it's yours. Take it this afternoon, it's yours. Everything you want from God, take that in before Him. Now let us pray. Everyone pray your way. Pray! Open your mouth and pray. Ask God anything you want. Ask Him anything you want. Pray like you mean it. Cry to Him. He loves to hear our cry. He loves to hear our cry. It's a prayer meeting. Cry to Him. Every gathering is a prayer meeting. We can never pray too much. Cry to the Lord. 
cried to him. Jesus said, there was a woman, she owed so much to the wicked judge. Every day, every day, she will come and cry. She will come and cry. And one day, the wicked judge was tired. The wicked judge said, I will give this woman what she wants. And Jesus said, if this wicked judge can do it, what about my father? What about my father? Oh God, hear our call. Hear our cry. Hear our prayer. Listen to us, Lord. Turn not your back. Oh Lord Jesus, there was a time the people of Israel, they did evil before you. And you told Moses, step aside. I will open the earth. I will consume them. Then Moses said, Oh Lord, if you do this, the people will say, you were not able to bring them to the land of promise. And the scripture said, and God repented. My Lord, my God, look upon us. If you can't sin against us, who will stand? If you can't iniquity, who will stand? But you say in your word, if we confess them before thee, you forgive them all. You put them in a sea of forgetfulness. Yes, when you remember them no more. Hallelujah. Do not judge us based on our sin. Yes, we cannot stand, Lord. Yes, Jesus. But let your blood take that his up. Apply the blood. Let it be applicable unto us. As his up was used to apply the blood in the doorpost. When the angel of death shall pass through, nobody in that house shall be killed. This afternoon, Lord, the blood is applied. The token is applied. The word is for us. Who can be against us? Blessed be your holy name. Thank you for this gathering. Remember my wife at the place of work. Bless her. Bless all our brothers and sisters that are not here, everywhere they may be. Bless them, Lord. All our attributes before you. Bless them all. Our prophet told us we can pray for our loved ones. And everyone we love. We love, we can bring them in. Lord, we bring them in this afternoon. Pass me not, oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Like the woman with the issue of blood, I touch the hem of your garment this afternoon, Lord. Come, Lord, and heal everything that's in this body. In everybody here, Lord. Meet everybody in their point of need. For your name's sake, that you alone will get the glory. Thank you for the message of the hour. Thank you for remembering us. Thank you for taking us out of confusion and establishing us in truth. Blessed be your holy name. We ask you thanksgiving in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. God bless you.